Welcome to the Nightcap. It's your girl, Carolina Sanchez. We're still celebrating Pride, baby, but tonight we're talking bisexuality, darling. It's something we've never talked about exclusively on the show. We've talked about lesbians, gays, trans even. But what about my bisexuals? I feel like they get the most hate, they're the most misunderstood, and there's so much drama around them. Ooh, I can't wait to dive in, but first I need a cocktail in my hand, and I've got Sean Celestine in the building for the first time. Yeah. Ooh, what is that? So this is called Night After Disco. It is kind of a marriage between a French 75 with lavender and a gin giblet. Ooh, I love it. You're gonna show me how to make this later? We're gonna do it, for sure. And I'm gonna talk to you ladies later, okay? They're my lesbians who are dating the two bisexuals on the couch. <laughs> oh, it's gonna get juicy, baby. So, let's get into it. Yeah, what's up for a nightcap? Chill, you know, kick back. All right, let's explore bisexuality with my friends who've been here on the show before. We've got Sydney Elise back. Hi. Welcome, welcome, baby. Thank you. About to get personal, darling. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and sitting next to you, we've got Kayla G in a very different hat. Very, very Little, different. We had her performing last time, but here yes. she is to talk about her experience. Mm -hmm. And our favorite clinical sexologist and sex therapist, Ty Lerman, is here to make it all clinical for us. I'll do my best. But keeping it fun. <laughs> <laughs> all right, actually, I'll start with you, Ty. Okay. Bisexuality, what yeah. exactly is that? So bisexuality is assuming a gender binary of male and female, and it is saying that I'm attracted to both. <laughs> I That's see. us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how did you discover that you were bisexual, Sydney? Yeah, um, so I think I've always been attracted to women, but I didn't realize it. Like when mm. I was little, I think I would like idolize like um, like some of my peers or like an older woman, whatever. And then just recently, I figured out, oh, that was a crush. Like th mm. that wasn't just an idolization. Um, and then I didn't act on my attractedness until like high school. So gotcha. It was a good while. And were you were you pursuing straight relationships prior to that? Yes, gotcha. so I've only been in two um, relationships with a girl and everything else has been with men, so um, it's kind of new in the relationship side of things. Oh yeah, we gonna talk to you yeah, partner yeah. coming up next. <laughs> we gonna get a little juicy, baby. All right, Kayla, what about you? What was your journey experience into discovering you were bisexual? Okay, I was in ninth grade. So I was walking down the hallway and I saw somebody and I was like, oh, he's fine. And then I got close, I said, that's a girl. I said, no. No, 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 you did not just say that girl's fine. And I was like, yes, you did. <laughs> and you meant it. Mm. And then I was like, hmm. And then that was just a wrap from there. Like, it was mostly girlfriends. And then I started dating guys every, like, here and there. So how was coming out to your family and friends? Was it weird? Was it awkward? Because you didn't really understand, like, am I a lesbian? Am I straight? Like, was there any of that confusion for you internally before you even came out to your Friends? As far as friends, no, okay. um, not for me. But family, family was a struggle, mm. especially um, at home. Like mom, that was a real struggle. With my dad, it was. I was scared because of how I felt with my mom. But once he found out, he was like, "That that's it. Like that's what you want to tell me." I was like, "Well, yeah." He was like, okay. <laughs> so, dad was super easy. Mom, it was a little hard. A little hard on mom. Yeah. Sydney, what was your experience? Yeah, for me, I was definitely nervous. So, for my parents, I did tell them about the first girlfriend that I had, but they said, like, oh, it's just a phase. Like, it was kind of brushed off. So, it wasn't like a negative reaction, but it wasn't the reaction that I wanted. Um, so, I didn't really talk about it ever again until I started dating another girl. Um, so I told them again, and my mom actually guessed before I told her, and then my dad, he had the same reaction. He was like, oh, I already knew that because y'all are always together, and I was like, oh, okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, and then for friends, yeah, in college when I wasn't really sure about my sexuality, like, I was definitely nervous to tell them, but now I feel free and open and you're everyone liberated. can know. Yes, <laughs> I, love, I mean, you're telling it on TV. Yeah, I'm on TV. <laughs> but I want to chime in on something that you said about it being brushed off. Do you find that people have a hard time believing bisexuals, Ty, in your practice? Is that what you see? With your yeah, I, I think, um, 
It's a little tough right now because we actually are seeing, by uh, especially women, uh, girls, uh, young uh, uh, middle school, uh, high school girls coming out as bi, and it is actually a fad. <laughs> so we are seeing that right now. Uh, when when, when uh, we're roughly in the same age bracket, uh, when when we were coming out, it was a little bit of a different story. And I I, I did actually came out as bi initially, um, and it was a phase for me on the way to realizing I was actually just gay and Halle Berry. Like, like that, <laughs> that was my attraction, right? Uh, so, uh, but yes, we, we, we do tend to, to um, minimize it. We tend to mm. kind of sweep it under the rug and kind of, uh, especially our heteronormative folks are just trying to like pretend like it's not a big deal. Right. Um, when in fact it is a, it's a whole sexuality, it's a whole person. Please notice that in neither of their stories did they stop being attracted to men mm. in their process, right? Mm -hmm. It was just a realization that, oh, I'm also attracted to women. I do have to ask the question, do you feel an ick with either? Are you like, ah, oh, man, I'm more romantically associated with men, I'm more romantically associated with women, or is it all the same, sexually attracted or? I feel like um, there's like percentages. Mm. I would say like, I'm like 70% <laughs> attracted to women, 30% attracted to men. Um, I feel like I've always said, even when I was in a relationship with men, like I've always said, overall women are more beautiful, but I never took that like as my sexuality until like within the last couple of years. Um, so I do feel like there is a fluidity within being bisexual as well. Mm -hmm. I agree with what she said. I'm definitely way more attracted to women. Um, with that being said, that doesn't mean I like all women. Just like right. <laughs> I don't like all men. Right. But there are just a lot of certain stigmas and unfairness with bisexuals. All right, let's talk about it. What, what are these unfairnesses? So we're actually, okay. you know what? You, you stay right there. We're we <laughs> actually going to bring in your partner. And we'll, we'll talk about the unfairness, shall we? <laughs> all right, you stay right there. It's coming up next. We're going to talk about all the challenges with bisexuality. Coming up next. I have something to say, because I've seen a lot of lesbians on this app who are scared to date bi women. They say, like, a bi woman's going to leave me for a man. I can't deal with that. Whatever. There's, like, some borderline bi phobia. And that is a perfectly fine opinion, because that leaves more bi women for me, number one. Number two, I don't really get that fear. Why are you so scared she's going to leave you for a man? Being left for a woman? Like, having a girl leave you for another woman? Intimidating. Like... I'm out. I'm heartbroken. They're probably soulmates. I'm done for. She leaves you for a man. I don't know. It's a man. I don't really think that he can outdo anything that I'm going to do for you. Oh, she got him. Okay. <laughs> I want a Dang. dose of her confidence. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're talking bisexuality, specifically by bi women. And joining our two by women, Kayla G and Sydney Elise, are their partners. We've got Raquel Simone, who's been on the show before. And for the very first time, we've got DJ Airy, okay? Time. What's up, what's up, what's up? All right, so you got to hear your ladies talk about their journey and their sexuality. Um, but as we saw on these TikToks, there's a lot of jealousy that may or may not go with that because they have a larger dating pool than you, right? They're looking at not just females, they're also looking at men. So. How does that feel? How do you navigate it? Because there are so many lesbians who will not date bisexual women. Um, I've recently been talking to Sydney and my friends about the topic, and it's been a struggle for me. Mm. Most of the women that I've dated, I'll say 99% of them, after we broke up, they did go back to a man. They did start a family. Oh. So I feel like that did hurt me, like, internally, and I feel like... I do sometimes feel like, okay, maybe I don't want to date a bisexual, but I have never turned them down. Mm. Yeah. And I want to add her thoughts to what she said. You forgot one part. She is hurt because they have said, oh, like, this was just fun, like, being with a woman. So yeah. Some of the women have said that. Some of the women have said that, yeah. Mm. Okay, so that is, a, that is a difference, Yeah. I want to say. Like, that sounds like a woman who was probably bi-curious. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. is bisexual, but wants to put that back in the closet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. DJ Airy? Um, so technically, like this is my first time dating somebody bisexual outside of somebody with a kid. So it's very different for me. When I was dating like just only lesbians, like they would deal with men too. They wouldn't just be real about oh. it. You know, so I, I feel like it's kind of a comfort to kind of be with somebody that's just, you know, confident in like who they are and their Upfront sexuality. Front with their sexuality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Kayla and Sydney, when you hear 
Raquel's point where it's like, ugh, left me for a dude. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what she was talking about, the woman on See, the See, I've TikTok. never got left for a dude, so I <laughs> have <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie, but it, 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 it seems like I, I would be hurt. I, I can I can definitely Or maybe not it. left for, but yeah, after you broke partner. up, yeah, the next partner well, was I think idea. that that also goes with what Ari was just saying is that she's dated, and I'm sure all of us um, at some point have talked to somebody who says they're lesbian, but they're really not. They're scared to be honest about their sexuality or the fact that they do like men and women. And so when they're with someone that's just a lesbian, they want to hide that because they're like, she may not like me, mm -hmm. but mm. you really do like men, and that's okay. Like who you like. For example, me, I say it all the time, when people are like, so what are you? I date who I'm dating. I'm with Aerie right now. Am I dating anybody else? I'm not going to talk to another man or woman, so you don't have to worry about me looking either way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm the same way. I always say, like, if I have a partner, whether male or female, like, I'm not thinking about anybody else in more than a friendship way. Like, I'm just thinking about my <laughs> partner in that way. Um, <laughs> what, is, what is happening here? Oh, there you go. Give me the two. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, we just did a YouTube video, okay. and instead of her saying bisexual, she was like, I'm a lesbian. So it's like she's only attracted to like me. Kelly, so that, Kelly, yeah. Kelly That's my nickname, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> yeah, she's I a was lesbian. like, what is this term? <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's a new one to me. <laughs> okay, so is there a jealousy, though? Are you like, hmm, like spending time with some, some guys, spending time with some girls? Like, is there an added layer of jealousy? I think it's about how confident your, your partner makes you, right? I feel like if you're comfortable and your partner is making you comfortable about situations, then you have no reason to kind of be jealous or envious. But if something comes up or you feel a type of way about it, like, I think it's just like about communication. And they have more options, you know? So it's like, you might see me with a dude, but you already know there's n absolutely nothing going on. Right. But I might see you with a dude or a woman. It doesn't matter. I, I can, the jealousy can go either way. So I feel like it's more options. I see you with a dude, I'm like, what's going on? I see you with a girl, I'm like, what's going on? So yeah. it's like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'm definitely in the same way, but I will say because of my past trauma, I do have more jealousy. But like you said, if you have a partner that makes you feel confident and comfortable, like. Those thoughts get in my head like, oh my gosh, she's talking to a guy right now. What are they talking about? But my positive thoughts are like, okay, you know, you know, she loves you. You yeah. know, she's a lesbian. Like, you have no worries. <laughs> <laughs> Period. So you're talking about one of the most important pieces around jealousy is that je all jealousy stems from insecurities. Mm. Mm -hmm. So either we're insecure in ourselves or we're insecure with our relationship. But if if the more secure we are, the less jealous we are. Okay. So really when jealousy comes up, it's opportunity to have a conversation of saying, hey, I'm feeling some insecurities in, my, in, in our dynamic or I, I'm feeling insecure about myself with you and we need to talk about these insecurities. Not, I'm jealous and I need to control you because you are triggering something within me that I don't want to talk about or mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with. Really, it's really about our insecurities that we need to talk about. That's the topic, not jealousy. Mm. Agree. Okay. 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 Welcome back to the Nightcap. We've been talking to a couple of partners about bisexuality and potential uh, challenges and joys, of course, mm -hmm. of being together. We've got Raquel and Sydney. We've got Kayla G <laughs> and DJ Airy. And we've got Ty Lerman here giving us the expertise from a clinical sexologist and sex therapist point of view. All right, before we went to break, we were talking about the insecurities that bring upon jealousy. Yeah. And during the break, you talked about how there's a difference between jealousy and envy. Yeah, we, um, we conflate these two words a lot and it's important that we distinguish them because we, we overuse the word jealousy and it becomes the catchphrase and then jealousy gets this really bad rap when jealousy is just like any other emotion. It is benign in and of itself, but what we do with the emotion matters. Mm. And so that's what we, we really don't like the behaviors that come with jealousy, but we wanna separate that out from envy. So the difference is uh, envy is saying, you know, you have something that I would like. Jealousy is I am threatened Mm. Something I already have is threatened by this third person. Okay. That's the difference, right? So if there's not a third person involved, that's not jealousy. That's envy. You have something I want. You're going on this amazing vacation. I want to go. And, and usually we get sadness with envy. With jealousy, we get anger and control. 
Would you yeah. say Ask jealousy okay. and like territorial are like the same thing? Uh, so so uh, sometimes jealousy comes with, uh, it's a possessiveness. Mm -hmm. You are mine which I think is toxic in the first place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's problematic um, because we don't own anybody else, including our partners. They are their own human, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, being able to separate that out and move away from that possessiveness sort of mentality, I think helps kind of quell some of that, that the, je the actual jealousy that comes mm. with. And also, like, jealousy gets a really bad rap. It's, a totally, it's totally fine to have a jealousy. It just means we have to talk about the insecurities that are underlying the jealousy. There needs to be some communication. It's just communication, yes, yeah. ma'am. And I'm gonna throw a PSA at that that some people do like to be owned. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, no kink shame. <laughs> <laughs> no kink shame. Like, if that's no a thing, shame. we can talk <laughs> about that, that's, but that's different. We can't <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do want to talk to Sydney and Kayla about their experience with straight men. Do they appreciate you the same way that a lesbian does? Do they understand your bisexuality? Or are they just like, oh, there's potential to at a third in the bedroom. They definitely always think there's potential when it's not the same thing. I said I was bisexual and not a freak. I mean, it's two different things. <laughs> two different things. But um, Again, no kink shaming. Right, no, no, not at all. Be not a freak. All. <laughs> Fly the flag. Not, not at all. <laughs> okay. But also, um, I feel like men don't necessarily get jealous behind it, just like whatever. Like They don't worry about it mm. as far as women might so worry about it more than a man, but I mean, women just have and show and deal with emotions way more than men anyway. So women just might double think or look at something a whole different way. Men are just like, whatever, mm. they don't care. Um, for my past like serious relationships, it hasn't really been much of a topic. Like I, same way, bisexual, not a freak, no shame. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I, they, as the guy, they were treating another girl like that would be just like you were cheating on another partner. It's not like something that they wanted to do. So people just assume that people out there are screwing everybody, and it's like <laughs> no, like if we if we're monogamous, you know that doesn't turn off our sex drive. It doesn't turn off our attractions. We're still attracted to other humans. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe maybe there's an exception here, but <laughs> uh, but we, we, that doesn't switch things off. Like we can still acknowledge that this person is beautiful, and I choose mm -hmm. not to pursue it. Mm -hmm. That's right. what monogamy yeah. is about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's fine. But bisexual people are not here ob objectifying and, and fantasizing about the other sex that they're not with. Right. They're choosing to be monogamous with this human, and that's the thing we have to trust. I just yeah. love that tie. Yes. Just yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, uh, before we go, I did want to talk about the difference between bisexuality and pansexuality, because I feel like yeah. a lot of people are now identifying as pansexual, as that has become a term that is recognized. Yeah. So pansexuality is 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 very similar to bisexuality, but it, it rejects the binary, the gender binary. Mm -hmm. It says I'm attracted oh. to people regardless of gender. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's me. And so it acknowledges it acknowledges There's our non-binary like binary like, folks, yeah. our yeah. gender Anybody. expansive folks, our trans folks. It's saying I don't care about gender, I just care about the person. And if I can feel connected, I feel connected. That yeah. sounds like Wh me. Whereby, like I said at the beginning, is 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 acknowledgement or it is assuming a binary of male and female, and I'm attracted to both male and female. It, it, it kind of ignores the middle ground. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right, well, do we feel good about today? Yeah. Yes. I feel great. Yes. Are we communicating <laughs> our insecurities? Yes. All right, sure. I love it. Well, representation for bisexuals. Cheers. And Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. All right, I'm going to head behind the bar now because Sean definitely has to show me how to make this. Nightcap, I'm behind the bar now because Sean Celestine is here and you're here to do what, baby? Back to Back to class up. Class up. All right, I absolutely loved the night at the disco. Okay, good. And uh, you gotta show me how to make it because, baby, cool, cool, cool. I drank that down. So this is, is really a summer vibe. Uh, you have your girls over, you want something that's light and pretty mm -hmm. and still gonna get you where you wanna go. This is night at the disco. So we're gonna start with two ounces of indigo. Empress Gin. Ooh. It's really floral. Does it come like that? You say it's indigo, so it comes colored yeah, like that? Yeah, the, that's the brand. They have different variations. Oh, nice. This is how it is. Um, I also use a little bit of edible glitter. That's the disco ball. Okay, yes, it. yes. You're going to have 0.5 ounces of lavender syrup. Nice. Did you make that yourself? You can buy it, but I like to make my own syrups and shrubs as well. 
Just, Sean knows what he's doing. You know what I'm saying. Don't attempt it at home. You can attempt it. You can attempt it. But. <laughs> practice make perfect. <laughs> Um, then we're going to use a uh, lime cordial, 0.5 ounces of that. Lime cordial is basically lime juice and simple syrup together. And that's, shake, you, it, shake, it. shake it up together. I'm not at the disc. Come on. <laughs> you oh, that was smooth. Strain that into your glass. You're going to put a lime wheel on the side. Perfect. And then after you strain it into your glass, Ready. We want to sink a little bit of blue carousel at the bottom, just a little bit. That gives that a little bit of sweetness. A little bit more sweetness too. We want to. Everyone doesn't like the the dry tartness of gin, so mm -hmm. I try to balance that out. Oh, it's fantastic. And to top it off, you put a little bit of circle on there. That's gonna move that blue. Ooh. Oh, look at look at they thirsty. <laughs> they thirsty. Okay, they <laughs> like it too. All right, amazing. All right, cheers to y'all and. What are we saying, everybody? Happy, Happy Pride! Pride!